Are you finding yourself pressing buttons really hard just to make something happen? Is it unresponsive, squishy, and just plain disgusting? Then get that screwdriver back out, because this is the second installment of Retro Maintenance, where we make sure your old controllers last as long as they can. After years of handling, your stuff gets a little grossed up if you don't have a way of cleaning it regularly. This is especially true for video game controllers, unless it's one of those third party controllers that only gets used when Cousin Fifth Player shows up on the 32nd day of autumn. You know that problem you have when sometimes buttons don't respond without putting them under a hydraulic press? That's what we're going to look at first. So, which controller should we look at for this? A uh, good old rounder of the early 90s? Uh... Ah, perfect. The Super Nintendo controller. Used a lot, showing age, the first controller to have shoulder buttons, I think, and very common. This is the one player 2 uses, because it's filthy and the buttons are squishy. On the back there are 5 screws, and we all know how to remove screws, though some could have gone soft over time and being too rough with them could shred the tips, making things exponentially more difficult. Once they're gone, put them in a safe place and now you can open up the controller, but be careful because the shoulder buttons are on metal posts which they rotate on and could very easily fall out, run off somewhere and never come back. Anyway, once you've secured the shoulder buttons and posts in a safe place, we'll turn our focus to the front piece which the board is still attached to. After removing the board from the top piece, this is where I would take all the buttons, d-pad and rubber squishies and store them in a safe place also. Here's the top side of the board. These dark circle things? They're the contacts the rubber squishies come into contact with when the buttons are pressed. They have little conductive pads that complete the circuit. For optimum responsiveness and connectivity, we'll give those contacts a clean. Again, with IPA on a cotton bud and rubbing until, well, clean. Then you take the dry side of the cotton bud and dry it off. Repeat for the rest of them. Easy. You can also clean the whole board if you really want to get rid of any dust or whatever else. But that's not all we need to do. The conductive pads and the rubber squishies will also need attention. Take a look. If they're really shiny or even show a little sliver of gloss, we need to be rid of it. How do I do that? Well, I get a blank piece of paper and just wipe the little stinkers along it, leaving these streaks. Look at that. Yick. With some persistence, they should be dulled out, and that's what we want. This will greatly improve the reliability and responsiveness to button presses. So we've dealt with the board and the conductive pads, now what we can do is put them in a safe place while we work on the buttons and plastic casing, including the shoulder buttons, but not the metal posts. My process is to fill a sink with warm to hot soapy water. I place the plastics in the sink, let them soak for a few minutes and get paranoid about losing pieces down the drain. When I come back, I start scrubbing the general area of everything, followed by cleaning the more finicky bits with a toothbrush to finally get rid of all that crap in the hard to reach areas. You know that stuff that gets in these gaps? That awful gruesome stuff that gets stuck in and you try to get out with your thumbnail which won't fit so you get a paperclip or safety pin to try and scrape it out only to find that it just builds up at the end? Yeah? That's you. Literally you. Your dead skin. Mixed in with whatever grease, sweat, peanut butter or other crap you have in your hands. Well, now it's gone. And we can just rinse everything off. When you are convinced that all is well and cleaned up, place it all on a towel and either let it air dry overnight, or be impatient like me and manually dry yourself. There are always difficult bits, such as the screw posts, where it will be a little while before they're completely dry. But hey, once it's all clean and dry, and make sure it's completely dry, you can put it all back together. Just reverse the tear down procedure and make sure you don't lose those finicky pieces. Wait a second, where those metal... where the... My posts are gone. Where the bait? Oh. Okay, now we're definitely done. Your controller should be back to or in better working condition. If not, well, bigger problem beyond just cleaning, I suppose. This entire process is enhanced when you put on some good music or a podcast and it gives you time to think about things future plans, the YouTube algorithm 
That girl you have a crush on? No. Get out of my head! Anyhow, that's how you take care of your old controllers and ensure they live a long life. Oh, and one more thing. With the lighter colored plastics, like with the NES controller, try your best to keep them out of intense light or heat, because that's how they end up going yellow, like this other one. In the next and final part of the series, we'll be taking a look at the main piece, the consoles themselves. I hope you enjoy my content, and as always, I'll be back in 16 bits. <laughs>